Radio Shouty. Putting it down for the town, man. What did the people say when you came out there and you just snapped? It was, it was uh, for the city, they accepted it because mm-hmm. I was able to combine two things to make adrenaline rush. And mm-hmm. when I say two things, the lyricism of an MC mm-hmm. and then coming from the streets of Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I was able to take my lyricism and talk about the streets of Chicago in a way that hadn't been heard. The production on that CD, though, man, did Legendary Tracks to know that he was giving you exactly what you needed? Because when you see the chemistry on all of that music, it felt like y'all put together good ass music and it was, yeah. y'all knew in the studio what time it was, man. Yeah. Is, are those facts, am I in the right direction with that? Or was that he sent a track and he turned it back and then come back and you done snap? No, nah, see, you got to remember those days the technology wasn't at the level that it is now. So mm-hmm. it was a lot of in person things going on. Okay. And also, one thing you don't really see a lot these days is one rapper work with one producer for mm-hmm. a whole project. Yeah. That's why I respect the Nas Grammy because it was put together you got one main producer working on a project exactly. and I kind of miss those days of like Snoop Dogg Dr. Dre you exactly. know where you got even the, the early the early Scarface and Rap-A-Lot records yeah. you know you had Mike Dean Beto you know yep. you got one or two producers doing the thing like Tribe Called Quest mm-hmm. you got just Ali Shaheed and uh, Q-Tip yep. so just that type of element was where Adrenaline Rush came from and I looked at tracks to like a Dr. Dre, mm. you know, he looked at me for my vibe and we and we just combined the two sounds because we knew they were perfect for each other. What was the point that you found Joe Swag to where you knew that you could ride that beat but still be lyrical at the same time and rap fast as hell? Because those are three different things right mm-hmm. there. How the hell were you able to pull that off? Because you got some folks that will try to rap fast, but they still ain't lyrical. You got some folks that will try to ride the beat, but it ain't hitting on nothing. What's going on, Nook? When you put together, when you write something, mm-hmm. and then you try to say it, and you realize you can actually say it. Mm. And I was like, damn, I, every time I, it'd be a little complex, but it might take me a minute, but I can say it. Mm-hmm. So I would challenge myself some more. I mm-hmm. would challenge myself some more. And that's how, when I realized, oh, I got pretty decent pronunciation. <laughs> you know? So that's what it really come from is like having good pronunciation, mm-hmm. decent vocabulary, understanding the cadence mm-hmm. of lyrics, having good rhythm, stuff like that. What was the point that you realized that Twister was being loved outside of Chicago and that everybody was getting down with the movement? When I was rapping for people outside of Chicago, they hated it or hated on me or dissed me. When I start rapping for Chicago, mm. everybody loved me. So it was when I rapped for my city and my block, that's exactly. when the world accepted it. Look, I remember one time when, um, it's funny, when, when, your, when, your first, when the song first came out on the radio, like I think it was a GCI or something like that, mm-hmm. and we was riding in the car. You, don't, you probably don't remember because you old and shit. But... <laughs> We was at the red light, and this song came on. We jumped off the car like, hey, hey, that's him. Just like, did we do that? We did yeah. do that, did we? had it's a temptation. Light. Moment. Yeah, we like, hey, hey, this is him rapping. I'm for real. Listen, goddamn it. We had a temptation <laughs> in the back of the truck moment. We showed sure <laughs> did. I, I didn't yeah. remember that until he just bought it up. Yeah, yeah. we were being crazy. Ain't nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah. Ain't nothing we wrong with that. We, we, yeah. we had fun. And um, I introduced the legendary tracks to Twister. Thank okay, you. Okay, so I need to be talking Side to you note. then. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we made it happen, baby. <laughs> okay, so did you know that the legendary Trackster was going to bring the funk like he needed? And did you know that he was going to switch up the style and bring the funk like he needed to at the I same did, time? I did, because legendary Trackster used to produce for me first. Oh. <laughs> did you know that, right? <laughs> I can't yeah, suicide and all that. <laughs> suicide, yeah, all that stuff, man. But, I mean... I already knew that that my main goal was to make sure I make this connection happen because that's when that heat go really bring that shit. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you don't have, have no idea. My boy Cavalier, you know, before the Twister was Cavalier. You know okay, then. Yeah. Go, go crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and real quick, I'm with you. a lot of people know, talking about the battle rap and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Dude is an amazing battle rapper before all I'm talking about. That's oh, what he was known as for battle rapping, going yeah, that's crazy. That's where it came from. And I'm that's so proud. You was rapping fast, cool, doing though. battle rap too? No, nah, this, this was before I started rapping fast. Okay, I'm about to say, yeah. goddamn, nigga. Yeah. The yeah, fast, the crazy. rapping fast came after mastering metaphors. Uh, after I got through, like, oh, and I could do this, uh, mm-hmm. you know, then after a while, I want to do something different. Like, okay, I got the metaphors. Like, what can I do different? Yeah. And then that's when I wanted to explore rhythm now, you know. So that's when it changed up. And then 
If you can do both of them, ooh. <laughs> man, I'm to you. In the middle of the night remix with eight ball and MJG, man. Mm-hmm. What was it like getting on that track with them boys and going crazy? I was happy. I was real happy because I, I was fans of them. Mm-hmm. I remember driving down there to their town, seeing the cars they had, them walking in the studio. I'm like, damn, they right here. You know, so I had a a fan moment. You know, yeah. sometimes when you, you do songs with certain people and you might already be on that level and they on that level mm-hmm. and y'all just meet each other like, what's up? And y'all get it in. Yeah. But when you are a fan of a person mm-hmm. and then they come get you to do something, and then you sitting there trying to play it off and be calm, but on the inside you like, this motherfucker ain't on the MJ motherfucker G. You know what I'm saying? Hell so, yeah. Yeah, I had to keep my little calm, but, you know. And then one, that's one of my moments, too, sitting in uh, MJG room, mm-hmm. and he was smoking a blunt. Mm-hmm. And he was making some coffee. He made him some coffee. <laughs> this was back in the day, so that's what made me say, I'm going to smoke a blunt while I got some coffee, too. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, he was the first person I saw have some coffee and a blunt at the same time. I ain't mad at that coffee <laughs> and kush. That's what we call it. Coffee and kush, so, baby. You feel me?